Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back. I'm James and you are watching Blue Dog Reptiles. Now, today we are talking about an animal that gets a bad rep and that's mostly because it is commonly mistaken for a rattlesnake. And that is none other than the bull snake. Now, this is a het albino bull snake and you can actually see its beautiful pattern. absolutely gorgeous markings now this is the captive bred bull snake which you know as we've talked about in previous videos we always recommend captive bred one we're not depleting the wild of these guys um, which can endanger their species and then two when you have captive bred animals they're healthier they don't have parasites they don't have near the health issues that wild caught do or imports so but today you know it took me a while to figure out what video to do today. Uh, just because we've done so many, uh, both our channels are, I think, right at 200 videos each. And so I kind of forget and try to think about new ideas of new care guides, new videos. But I've had this boy for a while. We actually just probed him today, so we actually know that he is a boy. Um, and you can see he actually does this trademark bowl. He's actually, of course, I, yep. He's rattling his tail. Now, they when they do this in the wild, they'll actually rattle their tail in the leaves, which makes it so much louder, which sounds like a rattlesnake rattle. And that's why one of the reasons why they're misidentified. Um, another reason is because they're different markings that they have. Um, this is in a head albino, but some of them are very dark and they mimic a rattlesnake very very closely now he isn't doing it right now and we will actually talk about it in a little bit we'll see if he actually does it um, but there's another reason why these guys are misidentified by a rattlesnake but let's get going into the care guide here so uh, these guys on average uh, this boy right here is about four feet in length uh, I think he's right at 36 when we measured him um, so not so three foot, three and a half foot is what he's nearing right now. But these guys can get up to six feet. Now these guys do like to hide out in rocks and burrows and do little surprise things that ambush others like rattlesnakes do. But the big difference is non-venomous right here, venomous for a rattlesnake. Now I'm not saying that you would like to be bitten by a bull snake. Uh, these guys actually do have a pretty nasty bite. Um, that's why I'm actually wearing the bite gloves with this boy. He isn't worked with a whole lot here in the store. Um, and on that note, if you're looking to take home a bull snake, hit us up on Morph Market. This boy is actually up for sale. Uh, we actually just started posting uh, reptiles on our Morph Market page so that we can be nationally shipping um, and we'll be shipping up until the fall or till when it starts getting cold. So if there is an animal that you're interested in that you've seen in our store, please let us know so we can help you out with that. Also, thank you to all the new subscribers. We're nearing 600 subscribers and that is just absolutely insane for how young this channel is. I wanna appreciate and thank each and every one of you for that support. With that being said, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please continue and consider doing it because we bring you awesome animals and awesome care guides uh, so that you stay informed on the different animals that might interest you in bringing these amazing creatures to your house. Also, please hit that like button if you do enjoy this video and leave us a comment on what you guys think of this boy. Would you like to have it in your house? Do you think you could handle a bull snake? Of course you could. You guys are all pros. Now, back to it. So the lifespan on these guys is a little back and forth. Now in the wild, they have a drastically different lifespan than they do in captivity. In the wild, these guys only on average live about 12 years, which is not surprising, mostly because people think they're rattlesnakes and they kill them. So I can see why that lifespan is cut short. But in captivity, these guys are on average living 20 to 25 years. This guy right here, I don't have his exact birthday in front of me. I think he is 
right at about a year and a half old, so he still has a long way to go. And he will be six foot when he's full grown. So that's a very big snake. And because he's only 36 to 40 inches right now, he does have a long way to grow, and which means that he needs a very big enclosure. So diet on these guys is a little tricky, and that's because they don't care. If it fits in their mouth, they're all for it. These guys have been known to eat frogs, rats, birds, other snakes. They don't honestly care. Uh, they've even been known to eating large uh, insects, which I just think is crazy. And I'm like, does that roach taste good to you? Does it? Does it? Don't bite me. So it's just absolutely insane. You know, you have species like the hognose or the ball pythons, which are very, which I mean, hognose, as we've talked about before, like both amphibians and rodents, um, rodents are way cheaper than feeding your snake amphibians. Um, there are snakes out there that uh, are snake eaters, true snake eaters, which would be your king snakes, and uh, on the venomous side, your king cobras. But the nice thing about king snakes is they will eat rodents as well, which king cobra as well as well, as will as well. Man, that is just a mouthful right there. But the primary diet that we fight, feed uh, this little boy here is rodents. So it makes it easy to just throw him in your freezer, feed him. Right now he's getting fed weekly. Um, the typical rule of thumb for us is we go by the biggest girth of his body and that's what size dictates what he is eating. I think right now he's eating a fuzzy or a pup. I'd have to look, uh, but he takes it down no problem. And then he looks at you like, please sir, can I have some more? <laughs> he's always right by his front glass just waiting. And then it's like he wants to come out, but then he gets mad when you grab him. It's like, how did you think this was gonna work? <laughs> but, Onto it. So temperature for these guys is not terrible. Uh, their basking spot on their hot side should be on average between 82 and 88. And then on the cool side, these guys should be in the low 70s. So 72 to 75 on average. Humidity is a little bit back and forth on these guys. Um, typically we keep them around 40 to 60% humidity, uh, which you can very easily accomplish by misting the enclosure. He doesn't like that and he will show you he doesn't like that but typically when you spray an enclosure don't spray your animal because i guarantee you your water isn't warmed unless you are that person that preheats their water before they miss their enclosure if you are kudos but most of us aren't they grab the spray bottle and spray it so don't spray the animal itself spray the enclosure that way the animal doesn't get shocked by that cold water and then you get bit because it shows you how it feels about that cold water. <laughs> Next up is enclosure size. Now, as a baby right now, um, these guys are ideal for about a 24 by 24 by 24. That's as a baby. Now, as adults, these guys should be in a minimum of four foot by four foot by four foot, minimum. That's because this is gonna be a six foot snake. Now, you don't necessarily have to go with the height of four foot. Some people do it around 24 to 28 inches, but I like to do a higher because then you can create a rock structure on the back wall and give it height to replicate its natural environment where it's gonna be hiding in the rocks. It's gonna be hiding in the caves. And then we also give it thicker substrate on the bottom that way it can burrow if it wants to. If this was a girl, she could go down and lay eggs. You're not a girl. No, you're a boy. He identifies as a boy. Next up is the substrate. So substrate for these guys is uh, in captivity would be like aspen or cypress mulch or ground walnut. Um, you can use, even use a mixture of jungle mix and reptile bark uh, to give it that grittiness. Obviously out in the wild, it's dealing with sand and soil and uh, getting that good combination. Um, biggest thing, because these guys do like to burrow and hide, um, 
whatever, if you decide to put rocks in your enclosure, make sure to silicone them in place so that A, if he decides to coil around it, A, it doesn't fall on him, and B, if he decides to dig out around the rock, that the rock doesn't shift and hurt him. Also, if he is wrapped around a rock, don't pull him out, let him come out because you can cause damage to their body if you sit there and just pull hard. If you start touching their body, they're gonna move. So just like that, I touched him and two spots and he stretched out. Very easy to move these guys around. Now, level of care with these guys. They're not for beginners, they, they just aren't. Um, I would classify these guys more as a intermediate to advanced level snake, and that's just because of their personality. Um, as we mentioned before, these guys can bite. They can bite hard. Um, they have a little bit of a unique personality. One day they could be, oh, hi, it's my best friend. And then the next day they're like, I will set you ablaze right now. So, but with all that, um, I would say do your research, do your research, do your research. Did I say do your research? I, I don't remember. But do your research. These aren't a beginner level snake. Um, it, this isn't like a corn snake or a ball python, as you can see. Did you just, I don't know if you heard him, but he actually hissed. These guys can actually project their hiss. It's another reason, it was actually my next note to talk about. So another reason why these guys are mistaken for rattlesnakes is because of their hiss. Now, yeah, I know, I can feel you rattling your tail. Now what they do is um, they actually push air past or across their larynx and it projects their hiss even louder. These guys are so, so loud when they want to hiss. He is actually not hissing right now. I mean, he did, he gave us a little hiss, but yeah, he, he's not wanting to do it now. But yeah, these guys are absolutely beautiful animals. Um, but again, do your research when it comes to bull snakes. As always, guys, make sure to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for tuning in on this amazing, amazing bull snake. We don't have a name for him yet. Uh, I just call him Noodle or Weirdo. So if you have a name for this guy, please drop it in the comments down below and uh, we'll make sure whatever name gets the most likes, then we'll name him that. So as always, guys, love your family, but love your reptiles more.